Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, I think I'll make a start right now with the presentation. Um, at the end of the presentation, if you have any questions, I will ask you to please send them to hello at intrinsis.com. I'll repeat this at the end anyway, in case you don't get to write it down. Right, so um, let's start. So today we're going to be talking about uh, introduction to contact and abacus CAE. Oh, uh, by the way, before this, can everyone hear me well? I know of one person that couldn't, but um, are the rest okay? If you want, you can just type there in the in the questions and just say okay. Perfect. Right. So a little bit about Intrinsys. It's a company that was established in 1998 as an engineering consultancy uh, using DASA Systems products. We do PLM consultancy. Um, it's the UK's largest and best resource DASA Systems business partner. Um, it's a PLM business with about 64 people um, in the PLM area. And in the engineering consultancy side, we have about 85 people. Um, four offices in the UK and one in South Africa. So um, in PLM Solutions, we provide um, well, software like 3D Experience Platform, um, CATIA, Inovia, Delmia, Simulia, Exalead, Transcat, IMS Post, Ramsys. Uh, we do consultancy for implementation and project management and software development. And we also provide support uh, with training and help desk. Um, we also are a design consultancy, so concepts all the way through to detailed design, uh, material uh, and process selection, prototype supply, and component testing. Uh, we do simulation and analysis, so we do component assembly analysis, uh, linear, nonlinear, thermal, dynamic, vibration, and fatigue. And we also do CFD analysis. Um, we have expertise in press and tool design, styling, patent design and research, casting and mold tool design, jigs and fixtures, vehicle installation, and so on. Right, so um, first of all, my name is Alejandro. Um, I'm a design engineer and analyst here at Intrinsys. And well, let's start with uh, the, the content for the webinar. So we'll talk about uh, contact in Abacus CAE. Um, and, well, this is an introduction to contact, so the contact is a very wide subject within CA alone, so uh, this is pretty much an introduction that will show you uh, some of the tools and some of the main tools um, within, within the software related to contact. So we'll have a look at uh, the general contact, we'll have a look at uh, contact pairs, surface to surface and node to surface. Um, and we'll have a look at a couple of the contact properties, which are finite sliding and small sliding together. So basically, contacts allow to define an interaction between component surfaces, and they can be uh, created and defined within the interactions module. So usually, when you go to module interaction, you can find them here, and you can create the interactions. And they're usually, um, they come together with the interaction properties. You have to usually define a property and then define the interaction uh, itself, which in this case would be a surface-to-surface -surface contact, for example. Um, it's important to talk also about master and slave. Usually you're going to find within contact formulations usually that there's always a master and a slave. We'll talk a little bit more about it later throughout the webinar. So uh, among the types of contacts um, that we can create, or more than the types of contacts, it's the ways in which we can create contacts. We have general contact and contact pairs. So in, in both cases, um, the results for a contact may be the same. It's just you're generating each one in a different way. So um, in the first one, with general contact, we model all interaction between surfaces um, in a more automated way. Um, this is done by the software. And with the contact pairs, you actually define the um, 
serve as this master and slave that are involved in the process. So that can be either a point-to-surface contact or a surface-to-surface -surface contact and so on. So the first one I'll talk about is the general contact. So general contact interactions allow you to define contact between many or all regions of the model with a single interaction. So in Abacus standard, general contact can be defined only in the initial step. And this general contact definition is active for all subsequent steps. That means that in Abacus standard, you define uh, the general contact, for example, in the first step, in the initial step. And then that uh, definition will propagate throughout all the steps following. In Abacus Explicit, however, you can define general contact in any analysis step or the initial step, and only one general contact interaction can be active in a step. So that doesn't change whether it's uh, standard or explicit, usually just one general contact can be active. You can with that, however, because um, the general contact will basically um, when you're running the simulation, generate the interactions automatically between any surfaces that be, that becoming uh, that uh, come into contact. Uh, so for this purpose, uh, you can also exclude some surfaces. So you can select them here. You can select which surfaces you want to exclude from the general contact definition. So in Abacus Explicit, you can define basically the um, the, the, the general contact, you can define it and edit it throughout different steps, whereas in standard you can only generate it in the first step or, and well, or, yeah, it'll propagate throughout the subsequent steps. So, um, some additional things about the general contact algorithm in Abacus standard. So, it's specified as part of the model definition. Uh, that's what I meant by it'll, it'll um, propagate through the different steps. Um, of the analysis. It allows very simple definitions of contact with very few restrictions on the types of surfaces involved. Uses sophisticated tracking algorithms to ensure that proper contact conditions are enforced efficiently. Can be used simultaneously with the contact pair algorithm. Um, so that's another thing uh, to keep in mind. You, we'll talk about contact pairs lately, later, um, but uh, you can basically define a general contact. and include also some specific contact pairs with different uh, contact properties. And these will be automatically excluded from the general contact definition. Uh, can be used with two or three dimensional surfaces and uses the finite sliding surface to surface contact formulation as the primary contact formulation. So finite sliding referring to one of the properties that we'll talk about at the end of the webinar. Um, the general contact algorithm in Abacus Explicit is specified as part of the model history, uh, model or history definition of the model, sorry, so that means that you can modify the general contact throughout the steps. Allows very simple definitions of contact without very, uh, very few restrictions on the types of surfaces involved. Uses sophisticated uh, tracking algorithms to ensure that proper contact conditions are enforced efficiently can be used simultaneously with the contact pair alg algorithm, so same as the standard, uh, can be used only with three-dimensional surfaces, and can be used only in mechanical finite sliding contact analyses. Uh, does not support kinematic constraint enforcement, so contact constraints are enforced with the penalty method, that means using friction. So here is an example, and this um, uh, model we have three parts. And if we go to the assembly, we can have a look at how um, these parts are all assembled. So in certain packages, you would have to define the individual contact pairs for these surfaces. But in here, we're going to use the general contact definition so that we don't actually have to specify those uh, separately. So first, we have the interaction properties. We define a tangential and normal behavior. Um, in this case, we're not going to go very deep into these properties. But basically, you define those two first as an interaction property. And then we create the general contact. So right now, here I have them created. But I'll show you in a moment how you can create them. So if we go back to interaction properties, you create a contact uh, property. And you add the mechanical tangential and mechanical normal behaviors of the contact. 
And then in interactions, you just double click and you create a surface to surface, or in this case, the general contact. Um, we have to go to the initial step in order to create it. And here, we're being told that we can only create one general contact definition. We add the global property assignment, which we created before, and that's pretty much it. So now, basically, when you run the simulation, um, every surface that it's in contact is going to be automatically recognized by the software. Um, and you felt well, that saves a lot of time in the sense that you don't have to actually define them. Right, so uh, let's review a few of the um, simulation methods um, why the general contact was created. So basically, uh, we have three different examples in this case, which are coupled Eulerian Lagrangian, smooth particle hydrodynamics, and discrete element methods. So uh, these methods have certain things in common, and it's that basically you'll have very large deformations of bodies, or you, have, you will have several individual particles, in some cases, acting uh, together. Uh, like, for example, when you get uh, several particles being mixed in a drum, for example, that's turning. Um, and it's, it's, uh, it's situations where basically you can't pick each one of the particles involved in the analysis and define the contact pairs between the, um, the different um, parts, because that would take ages for you to define. Uh, so we're talking here, when I, when I talk about a big, a large number of particles, for example, I'm talking about 100 particles or 1,000 particles. And something that's going to be uh, behaving in a very uh, random uh, manner. So the general contact basically was created for us to be able to analyze the situations in which we, we have this um, sort of analyses, all, all very random. And you don't exactly know which surfaces are going to be in contact with what at, at certain points within the analysis. So basically, the software automatically recognizes um, the situations as the analysis is running. Here we have a couple of examples with, where this is used. So this is basically um, a bottle dropping. Um, and we were having a look at the fluid behavior inside the bottle as well. So this is a CL analysis. If we go back to the previous slide, we can have a look here. So a CL analysis, or a coupled Eulerian-Lagrangian analysis, allows Eulerian and Lagrangian bodies within the same model to interact. So basically, in this case, what we're doing for an analysis like that is changing the reference frame. So usually what you have, uh, it's the mesh moving inside an object, yeah? In this case, what we have is the object moving throughout the mesh, yeah? So it changes um, in that case. And this is a good case for using the general contact. Another one we would use is the drum example I was talking about earlier. So in here we have several particle, particles um, though they're with the different properties. And basically, we allow all those particles to mix inside the drum as it, as it turns. Now, I would like you to imagine yourself defining the individual contact pairs for each one of those um, little balls there. I don't think that would be a very easy task. Plus, you don't know exactly throughout the different stages of the simulation which particles are going to come in contact with each other. So that's why we use the general contact definition. Right. Um, so leaving general contact behind, we now go into um, the contact pairs. So this option is used to define pairs of surfaces or pairs of node sets and surfaces that may contact or interact with each other during the analysis. So in here, we are going to talk about three methods um, in which we can define contact pairs. Uh, so we have the contact detection, we have the surface-to-surface -surface contact, and the node-to-surface contact. So in this case here, like in the picture, you actually define the two surfaces that, in a specific case, are going to be in contact with each other. Right, so the contact detection tool is pretty useful, uh, especially when you have a very large model with uh, many, many surfaces in contact, 
but that's not going to be as ra as random, for example, as something like like we were having a look at, uh, in the general contact, like the drum or the um, the bottle drop. In that case, which by the way, they they were analyzed not they weren't analyzed using the abacus standard. Um, so the contact detection allows you to basically prior to or prior to the simulation, you basically uh, allow the software to identify all the surfaces that are currently in your assembly in contact with with each other, and it'll list them here so that you can edit them, change the names, change the formulation of the master and slave, uh, define uh, the tolerance. So here you can actually say, right, I want every surface that is under this, um, every pair of surfaces that are within this tolerance to be uh, taken into account as a possible contact situation. And you can also define the selection of the surfaces um, uh, instead of being individual surfaces in contact, you can select them by angle, meaning that every other surface that is at an angle of 20 degrees or less with one another, it's basically going to be taken into account in the selection. Uh, so basically, using the contact detection tool is a two-step process. First, Abacus CA searches for surfaces in the model that are likely to interact. Then you have a chance to review the identified surfaces and modify the default uh, contact pair parameters before creating interactions and constraints. You provide some basic criteria to guide the search. And these criteria include the search domain and the distance between surfaces that will likely be in contact. So here, I'll show you how to use that tool. Basically, go first to interaction properties. We have to define our interaction property. So that's basically, again, it's how our contact is going to behave. So we take the defaults here for tangential and normal behaviors. Then we go to interactions. We right click and go to find contact pairs, which opens the tool that we're going to use to find all the possible contacts. And here, we're going to use that default tolerance and the default uh, value of the angle to search for the surfaces. And you just find the contact pairs. So um, as we navigate through the window, through the list, we'll see the different contacts being highlighted. So those are all the possible contacts in our model. You, remember, you can delete some of them if you don't want them. Um, and you can edit them as well. So there, we'll go through the whole list. And some of the last ones, we're going to have to change the um, master-slave formulation. So before we continue in here, I'd like to pause this uh, video for a second. and. So it's very important to remember with master and slave formulations that there can only be, so um, one slave or one surface can only be slave to one master. A uh, surface cannot be slave to two masters. So in this case, what we do is change that formulation so that we don't get, oh, so that we don't get an error. Um, we don't get an error uh, when we run the simulation. So that we do it with the bolts at the end. So those last surfaces there, we changed the formulation. We changed the master and lathe with this. There, we change it, we swap the master and slave. Click OK. And then once we click OK, we see all the different interactions that have been created. So those are all the contacts that the model currently has. And you can double click on each one of them as well and edit them individually if you want. For example, in case you want to change the interaction property. 
So, contact pairs and abacus standards. So they can be used to define interactions between bodies in mechanical coupled temperature displacement, coupled thermal electrical, structural coupled uh, pore pressure displacement, coupled thermal electrical, and heat transfer simulations. They're part of the model definition. They can be formed using a pair of rigid or deformable surfaces or a single deformable surface. They do not have to use surfaces with matching meshes and cannot be formed with one two-dimensional surface and one three-dimensional surface. So that being, uh, in, so in a model you can have um, still a surface but that's part of a 3D model. So this basically is telling you that you can't do it with between a, a surface in a 2D model and a, a solid in a 3D model. You cannot create contacts between those two, but you can create contacts between a surface and the solid as long as they are both part of the 3D environment or a 3D analysis. Right, uh, contact pairs in Abacus explicit. They're part of the history definition of the model and can be created, modified, and removed from step to step. Use sophisticated tracking algorithms to ensure that proper contact conditions are enforced efficiently. Can be used simultaneously with the general contact algorithm. Can be formed using a pair of rigid or deformable surfaces or a single deformable surface. Do not have to use surfaces with matching meshes and cannot be formed with one two-dimensional surface and one three-dimensional surface. And cannot be used for self-contact where the surface is composed of both uh, first order element and second uh, order element. So another thing to mention um, for uh, contact pairs, it doesn't matter whether that's abacus standard or abacus explicit, is the size of the meshes between slave and uh, master surfaces. Usually the master surface should be that one with the coarser mesh and um, it's good if the meshes are closer to each other, although that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. You can have a larger mesh, way larger mesh in the master, and um, um, a much finer mesh in the slave. Uh, but usually it's good practice to have whichever has the coarser mesh as the master and the finer mesh as the slave. Right. Um, so within contact pairs, there's two ways of creating them. Usually you can define it as a node to surface, in which case uh, you define the slave surface uh, as a nodal region instead of selecting an actual surface from the model. The problem of this is, of course, if you remesh, you may have to redefine that uh, node region. Um, so the nodes on the slave surface contact the segments on the master surface and slave nodes can't penetrate master surface. But the master can actually, the master surface, uh, the nodes in the master surface can penetrate the uh, slave surface, which usually can bring uh, some errors in the results, um, or not errors, but they, they won't bring so um, results that are uh, so accurate. Then we have the surface to surface contact. So the contact is enforced in an average sense. So integral, basically, over a region surrounding each slave node. These are less likely to have penetration from master surface into slave surface. There is less sensitivity uh, towards the master-slave definition of the surfaces, so that's also good. Um, improves accuracy of contact stresses and better with quadratic elements uh, than node to surface. So if you're using a, a higher um, order mesh. Um, it's better to probably use surface to surface. And it's not as good uh, solving point to surface contacts. Um, so in that case, you may have to define a node to surface. Um, and some guidelines, for example, the, well, the slave surface should have a finer mesh, ideally, um, anyway. Right, um, another thing to mention in node to surface is, even though you may have some issues, there's ways around that, and it's that the node to surface will allow you to define two contacts between the same two surfaces. In one case, um, so basically what you would be switching is the master and slave formulation. So in one contact between the two surfaces, one is the slave and the other is the master. And in the other contact definition, in the, for the same two surfaces, the, uh, you exchange that, um, that role, basically. 
the one that was a slave will also be a master, and the one that's a master is also going to be a slave. So what that's going to give you is an improvement in the, um, in the pressure distribution. Uh, the problem is if you are looking into obtaining results for the contact pressures on your model, uh, sorry, the contact forces, uh, you have to work out um, those values between the two surfaces because I believe the contact forces, you usually obtain them from the master surface, if I'm not wrong. So in this case, because you have two master surfaces and two slave surfaces, um, they're sharing the load effectively. Uh, you may have to work your way around to get those um, contact forces. Right, so um, let's see here how we create uh, contact pairs. Basically, I'm hiding one of the parts there so that it's easier to select the internal surfaces between them. We generate a surface-to-surface -surface contact. We already have the contact interaction properties defined. So it says there to select the master surface. We select it. We click Done. And then we choose the slave surface. So we go to the other part. And we select the slave surface. Once you're done, you can define well, several parameters there, but here we're just going to leave it all as uh, default. And we basically have created a contact pair there. So it's a very simple process, but of course in this case, because we are doing each one of the contact pairs individually, um, instead of using the contact detection tool, we would have to manually create each one of those contact pairs, which can take a while. Right, so uh, just before we finish the webinar, uh, I'd like to talk about two contact properties, um, which are finite sliding and small sliding. So basically, finite sliding, which is usually the default formulation for the contact, uh, finite sliding is the most general contact formulation and allows any arbitrary motion of the surfaces. Uh, so it's usually better, but it's more computa com uh, computationally demanding. Then you have the other option, which is small sliding. So small Sliding assumes that although two bodies may undergo large motions, there will be relatively little sliding of one surface along the other. So this one's only uh, available for contact pairs. It's not available on uh, the general contact. And this can cause non-physical results depending on the analysis that you are creating. And here we have in this um, images um, two options. So we basically have these two surfaces that are going to be in contact. In the first one, we have the finite sliding formulation, and we basically see that uh, this particle 102, this node here, the possible path of the slave node 102 throughout the master surface can be this one, which is good. But the way the small sliding works is in uh, at each one of the um, so the of the master nodes there, it, it would generate a slide plane, yeah. So there's a master slide plane for slave node 102, which in this case would not probably simulate that well, because in this case, our node uh, wouldn't undergo this path, wouldn't undertake this path um, in case that was actually going to happen. And that's the issue, and that's why sometimes we can get some errors in the results uh, if we have a relatively large um, displacement uh, between uh, the nodes. So this one basically generates a sliding plane through which my node is going to basically contact with the other surface. Uh, how do you define whether you want finite sliding or small, or small sliding whenever you're in the um, individual contact definition? So in the um, contact pair definition, here you can choose whether you want finite sliding or small sliding. Uh, again, small sliding less computationally expensive, but uh, you may want to be careful uh, to which cases you apply it as you may not get um, very accurate results, depending on the type of part you're analyzing. Right, uh, this is uh, the end of our webinar. Um, the next steps, you can follow our blog for weekly hints and tips, uh, the intrinsis.com uh, slash blog, inquire about our on-site or classroom training, and speak to us about a custom demonstration if you need one. Thank you very much. Um, do remember, if you have any questions, uh, usually questions related to analysis issues, we 
have to spend a little bit more time answering them uh, in many cases. So uh, do not hesitate, please, to send them to uh, hello at intrinsis.com. Um, thank you very much.